calling out all my nerds, freaks, and geeks. It's mob time. Don't tune in, cut the show time. Go ahead and call the gang up for the one time. Rap food rise, got them on the line. And my life's still great, I'm doing just fine. Hands up. What's up, y'all? And welcome to the Blurred Mob, your hub for all things black and nerdy. I am your host, Foop, joined by my two co-hosts, Ron and Antoine. If you're listening to this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or any other streaming service, make sure you hit that follow button so you can get updates from the mob. And if you mutants and comedians are watching us on YouTube, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn those bell notifications for future uploads, and engage, bro. Comment. If you don't finish the video, come back and comment again. Tell us what you like the most about the video. See, Participate in the topic. Follow it. us you're on social it. media. We need some subscribers. We trying to get paid. We hitting our three year anniversary. Right, we trying to get it. paid. You're I'm dragging here. it. I'm happy. I'm excited. Energetic. Let's go. Energy up. Turn Woo. up. Woo. 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 All right. <laughs> But, of course, let us know how you feel about this episode. Let us know in the comments. Today, we are bringing you guys a mob review of Deadpool and Wolverine. The third movie in the Deadpool franchise dropped July 26, 2024. It's currently sitting at $852.1 million in the box office. I believe that's making it one of the highest grossing rated R movies ever and is looking to track to be one of the highest grossing superhero movies. Not highest, but in the top five. I think I saw something that said at the end of its theatrical run, it's going to make anywhere between 1.3 and 1.4 billion. So does that mean it's tracking behind like the Avengers if they're saying like top in-game. superhero movies? Yeah, like in game, yeah. Infinity War. Okay. Like it's it's gonna be up there. So we What we talked about in that San Diego Comic Con video might be true. This was a good cash grab. Yeah, and if we did talk about um Robert Downey Jr. coming back as Doctor Doom in the MCU as well as the other MCU updates coming uh, 2025 and beyond towards the end of the multiverse saga. Make sure you check out that video and let us know how you feel. But um, how are you guys doing today before we hop into this epicness of a movie? Doing good. good. It's Tuesday. We ain't close enough to the end of the week, but we, we trekking on. God, it's good all the time. All the time. God is good. That must not be you. Uh, you didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just I'm just thrown off of what's going on. I'm just really thrown off about what's going on right now. <laughs> hey, energy up, Foop. Come on. I'm up. Coffee. I'm trying to I'm trying like, to see what's up. going on. Like I'm Stand up. up. Like I'm Stand up. up. Y'all are she over here today. Up. <laughs> y'all, are, uh, y'all are over here. Y'all on the floor. I told her, get up. Get up. Like, I'm on the plane, and y'all didn't put on jetpacks and started p- pushing pants. <laughs> <in the ocean. laughs> but, oh, man. But to get into these hot takes, uh, before we start, if this is your first time here, I want to let you know that our mob reviews are spoiler filled. So if you have not seen Deadpool um, and Wolverine, I would recommend you pause this video, um, go watch the movie, come back, and listen to the discussion. So let's start with our first hot take. Um, How did we feel about the movie overall in comparison to the past two Deadpool movies and in comparison to the other movies of the MCU Phase 5? It's definitely top phase five movie for sure. Because what are we comparing it against? Give me phase five. Phase five is Ant-Man, Quantumanium, Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3. Didn't watch that. The Marvels. You mm-hmm. should have watched that. Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3 was hilarious. And it had okay. a good plot. Um, the Marvels and... I think everything else in Phase 5 is coming 2025. I'm not really sure where Phase 6 actually starts. But um, I think those are the only three movies that we've gotten so far. 
in the MCU as far it, as Phase Five. It's it's at the top for me because Ant Man Quantumania. I mean, it was an. Um, in comparison to other Deadpool's, I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna be real. I don't think it was my favorite. I think Deadpool one had me laughing a little bit more, maybe would, because of the novelty. I would definitely agree. Deadpool one. If yeah. I had to rate the Deadpool movies, it's one, three, and I really was not a big fan of two. Two. Yeah. Yeah, I barely remember anything from two. Like, yeah, I would agree with yeah, that. I had to go and re- remind myself. I was like, "What happened in two again?" Yeah. But. Yeah. Overall, I did enjoy the movie. I think for what it was, kind of like even like what it was advertised as, what they were kind of like saying on social media, I enjoyed it. Um, I know a lot of people were like, ah, it wasn't a lot really going on for it, but I kind of just knew what they were going for for that. So mm-hmm. I enjoyed it for what it was. It was a good movie. I also think a lot of people who don't just are, aren't into like Marvel superhero type movies or anything like that, they can watch a movie like that. And just mm-hmm. just for the laughs, so for that it was it was it was good. I would, in comparison to the past two Deadpool movies, I think this comes second. Like I already said, my top three in comparison to the other movies of MCU Phase Five, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three takes the cake for me. That's number one. That's number one. And the only reason I say that is because Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 had a good uh, balance of laughs and plot. I think mm-hmm. Deadpool 3 was kind of like... Laughs. It was like it was like, it was like a It was like a spoof movie. And that it's like a spoof superhero movie. Like a comedy mm-hmm. sketch in the, in the middle of the MCU. And that's not, you know, a dig at Deadpool because that's how all of the other movies were set up anyway. I think they executed humor and plot a little bit better in the first one but when we got to the second when we when i got to the second one i was like okay this is this is for laughs like this is like like that superhero movie with drake bell but instead of the green suit he has on a deadpool suit Mm, and then deadpool 3 was just that like times 10 yeah i would agree i would agree like it I I kind of was expecting a little bit more plot coming into it, I, but it was I definitely didn't. more focused on the. Co- I thought it was going to do a little bit, but like given, just at least a little bit more. But given the given what dead given how they set up these past two Deadpool movies, I don't think I was going in expecting plot at all. Okay, like a cohesive plot. Like mm-hmm. at the bare minimum, there was this. You know, we're following. We're following, but as far as like beginning, leading up to the climax, going down the resolution, and what comes at the end of that, I wasn't expecting that. Fair yeah. enough. It it was cool though. I'll say this. It it had me laughing. Some jokes hit, some missed, but they told so many, you're not too upset about the misses. Mm-hmm. Overall, I I felt like my money was well worth it and I saw it in XD. Thought it was worth it. Yeah. They pulled that story out the ass. So. And yeah, they definitely <laughs> did. Definitely I got. Did. I would say this to go ahead and kick this off. I think the true purpose of Deadpool and Wolverine was to communicate to us of what they were going to do with the Fox universe and with the TVA and everything. They basically they explained it that the TVA pruned it, the Fox universe, all of the movies, um, mm-hmm. Logan the X-Men trilogy, Fantastic Four, Blade, Elektra, all of those movies that Disney had got the rights to when they got 20th Century Fox. This movie was right here telling you that what what what's the plan for those franchises? And the plan was, oh, they being pruned. Let's move on to the next thing. That was, I, this is at the end of my first watch, because I saw it twice. The end of my first watch of this movie, I was like, okay, this was the true point of this movie to get all them Fox characters out the way so y'all can stop asking questions and all mm-hmm. this other stuff of what we were going to do with these plot lines and what could they do now that they own it. They not doing nothing with it. It's gone. Yeah. I feel like it was the perfect transition movie. Like this movie was basically like, Hey, instead of us doing like a whole showcase at Comic-Con, we're just going to tell you through a movie and we're going to make you laugh during it. It was well executed. It's what all do, going. What do you mean by? <laughs> uh, you mean by 
having like a Comic Con panel about what they yeah instead of having a panel about what we're going to do we're going to show it to you like I that wouldn't have been a panel that that would have been an email. They not coming. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, this stuff is exciting. That stuff is exciting. I would, I mean, I would agree. I agree on that end. That seeing Kevin Feige walking up at this big Marvel panel in H Hall at San Diego Comic Con just to tell us that they're not doing nothing with these Fox movies is boring. Now, you throw that in there. You throw Hugh Jackman coming back as Wolverine. You throw Deadpool in there. The cameos, we got to talk about the cameos. You throw all those cameos in there. But that's the true point of this movie. Now we got something. Now now we're saying? telling you what happened. And we're making you laugh. And we just made $850 million at the we box office. Made, some money. <laughs> made all Shut our up. money back. Everybody had made all of our right? money back. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all cool, right? <laughs> Like this worked? Okay. I I would agree with that. So let's move on to these uh performances. So as always, we got Ryan Reynolds performance as Deadpool, who Hugh Jackman returned as Wolverine, Emma Corrin as Cassandra Nova, which was uh one of the antagonists of the movies, and then Matthew McFadden Fadden as uh Say Paradox. That again. McFadden. <laughs> I'm going to sound it out. <laughs> okay. I'm going to sound it in. <laughs> you must know how to say it. I don't. All right. I'm trying to make sure okay. you're saying it right. Because I don't think, is that how you say it? <laughs> I hope so. If I said it wrong, I'll, 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 if I said it wrong, I apologize. Jonathan, if you come back and watch uh, this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize, but but getting back to the point, how did you guys feel about their performances? And I I I want to save the cameos for a different conversation, but for those those four, how did you guys feel? Hugh Jackman is still a man, amazing actor. I just got to say, with him, like I see how he acts. I like I looked at his Instagram, and obviously it could be marketing and everything, but he seems like a really laid back kind of goofy kind of dude and it's like when you see him how he acts on instagram in his personal life it's like wait you be playing that angry drunk wolverine to the t it's called mm-hmm. acting my guy it's called yeah, acting he, it's called he, acting he's good my at guy that. he's really good at that so I, I i like seeing him on the screen i'll say that yeah he he ain't lost a step in old age he is still an amazing actor and ryan reynolds very consistent i'll say when you think ryan reynolds it gave Ryan Reynolds. He was consistent with his comedy, his satirical, fourth wall breaking comedy. It was it was there. Couldn't be mad at it. Knew what to expect and it was delivered. I would go on a limb and say that these are two actors that have very specific roles that currently, presently, I cannot see anybody else portraying those characters. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Like, I know eventually, at some point in time in the next few years, they're going to have to find somebody else to portray Wolverine. But right now, I have no guesses for you. I know in, I don't know how long Ryan Reynolds is going to do the Deadpool thing. I don't know what plans they have for him in the MCU, if they have any. Um, But when that time comes, I... Like I said, again, I have no picks, no draft choices or nothing about who could take those mantles. And that's and that's the tough part. Like we're used to roles like Superman and Batman just being reshuffled here and there. But like Mm -hmm. nobody can really replace Wolverine. I'm sorry. You will always be compared to Hugh Jackman. (laughs) But I think it's just I think it's just the longevity because I like the fact that you brought up Superman and Batman because even before, you know, the Dark Knight trilogy came out, they had been switching Batman actors since Adam West. Adam West. Exactly. Um, what's his name? Michael Keaton. Then George Clooney played him. Yeah. Then we had Christian Bale. <laughs> then we had Ben Affleck. And now that the yeah. DCU was on the way, we about to get a whole nother Batman. You know, I think we're that just... Mask. I just <laughs> right. feel like... And then Superman is, the, Superman is the same business. And then uh, I feel like we just been... Because of so many switches, we've just been desensitized that when... And then you got Robert Patterson on the back end playing Batman. Who was surprisingly good, surprisingly. We didn't see that coming. 
But I think the fact that Fox, when they were making so many X-Men movies that they consistently brought Hugh Jackman back and every time they brought him back, his performance was like stellar. Mm -hmm. I think that's why I I feel like that's why we can't see the actors being switched out. But I think once they do it, then I'll be like, oh, okay, we can switch Wolverine actors. It didn't have to be Hugh Jackman. We could have did this the whole time. They're gonna have some big shoes to step in though. We because yeah. like everybody's gonna be hard on them. Yeah, it's gonna like, be hey, you're going period. into Wolverine. Yeah, but um, I have to to go to Hugh Jackman's performance. I think he did what great one particular scene where he basically ripped Deadpool a new one in that Honda Honda Odyssey. I felt him. <laughs> I felt I was like, you, you, I would have done the same. He if I said it's yeah. one of God's best jokes that you can't die. And I was like, oh, he's feeling that. Yeah. I'm feeling, he's feeling <laughs> that and I'm feeling him. <laughs> you pulled that from the gut. <laughs> that wasn't written in the script. He said that from the heart. Like, yeah, he, like he was like, he was like, he was really feeling it. Like, I know, like, with Ryan Reynolds, they try to give, like, Deadpool a couple of, like, emotional moments and him having, like, his emotional speeches. But to me, it didn't resonate because it's, like, 90, 90, 90% of the movie, 99.9% of the movie, you're a goofy as hell and unserious. And then this 1% mm-hmm, of the time, you yeah. want us to look at you and feel sorry for you. I cannot. hmm Yeah. I cannot. And it's not it's not a dig at Ryan Reynolds and his performance as Deadpool. I just feel like it's just the way that it's set up. Yeah, he ain't we serious went, under that mask. We, we went from you tongue tongue kissing this dog to us trying to feel bad because you got rejected by the Avengers. I just mm-hmm. saw you tongue kissing a dog. I can't. What was hey, bro? I heard that, that dog was... is like in real life is like the ugliest dog on earth. Why did they even? <laughs> It's that part of the so gimmick. Disgusting. It's part of that the gimmick. That was so disgusting, bro. It was. It was. It, its tongue couldn't even sit inside its mouth. Like, I got a lisp. Like, that dog, like, I don't know what you call that, bro. <laughs> like, that, that motherfucking tongue, that tongue <laughs> was in that mouth. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I guess it was part of, it's part of the gimmick. Like, some of the things they did was, like, part of the joke. Like, when, I, when, when we get to these cameos, one of these things, I was like, it's just part of the joke. But um, mm-hmm. who I really liked in this movie was Cassandra Nova. She was I, was cool. like, I was like, I like you. Her I did. powers. I did like seeing her. I because I I didn't know because I was asking. I don't remember if I asked you about that, but just seeing her, I was like, oh yeah, I like her. I I was like, I like her as a villain. I would like to see her in more, mm-hmm. actually, but we, that's not happening. I don't think they're gonna bring so. her back. <laughs> so, like the way it. the way that the way that movie ended, they're not bringing her back. Mm, she's not. Now, but she could be a was good. Was she villain. seen in any other X Men movies? And I just missed her. Okay. If if she was, maybe it was like a minor detail or something they put like in the background or something. But this was my first time. Seen her like about action like that. Yeah. Yeah, she was nice. And I really liked her. Thing. Yeah. Like her, like the way that she has to do the telepathy, the way she was doing her powers, the way that she was just having fun. Well, when I was she like, dragged that, that man. That's... She... <laughs> like, how you yeah, Mr. Like, Pe- <laughs> she playing in his head, then grip his face. Come with me. Come on. <laughs> I was like, I was like, how did that even work? Like, did you mess up I, any veins or arteries in his head I, doing that mess? Right. I also like, and I know like we ain't gonna get this, but I also like how it was kind of just on sight for her. I, I know not with Wolverine and Deadpool because they made characters to level, but the way she tore up the human torch, I was like, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, my just. favorite, my favorite um, I guess like actor behind the scenes type thing is that the actress, um, Oh, uh, the actor. They said that um, when they did the scene, and they felt bad when everybody saw it. They felt so bad that they killed the Human Torch because everybody was like, everybody was excited to have him back, and then like five minutes later, like she ripped all the skin off him. And I was like, "You made a name for yourself." Like I she knew did. you. Was, I I knew you was about business when you did that. I yeah. was like, "Oh, I like her." That's a villain. Yeah. Villain. 
that that's a villain. <laughs> Real villain. villain. Mm-hmm. And we like to like see you, that. Like you, you, you talking too much. Oops, no skin. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. No skin. Because yeah. a lot of times we see that with villains, they like they do. Everybody just do all this talking and stuff. And she was, she, yeah, it was, yeah, on site. And I thought Ryan Reynolds was really lying about what he said about her until we what got the, to the end. The human like, oh, he did. And then he really yeah, said like, that. He really said all. <laughs> and he said, gotcha. <laughs> but that that was that was at the end of it when it came full circle. That was funny. And then you know. um Matthew, who played Paradox, I thought he was fun too. Um not as much as I like Cassandra, though. I yeah. think he was yeah, I think he was more supposed to be like that character that doesn't get like the appreciation. Um he's trying to do yeah. his big he's trying to do his big one. Like that's how it felt. Like like he he never felt threatening at all. And maybe that was the point for him to never feel threatening, but he never felt like even when he was threatening Deadpool with the whole like I'll obliterate your timeline type thing, I was mm-hmm. like, hmm, it's not yeah. really giving. Yeah. yeah, he was like that secondary. Like we know you're bad, but eh. you're trying to be mm. bad. Ah ha ah ha! All right, <laughs> you not nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he. That's what he gave. But um, I do like um if we want to focus on the TVA. So with the TVA, this was something introduced. Mm-hmm back in Loki season one about them, like the pruning of the timelines. Um, the mm-hmm. boy was first mentioned in Loki season one, but we didn't get to see it as expansive as we did in this movie. Um, but I, I thought it was like I was saying before, I thought this was a good way to wrap up the Fox universe by saying the TVA just put them all in the void. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it was the yeah, best because, way they could do it, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it gives it like it gives it like a legitimate ending, so now fans can be quiet. Not saying there's anything wrong with them wondering, but it's like, yeah, they're in void and there's yeah. no getting out. Yeah, they like, time like they timeline got pruned. That's what happened. I think I, there were some theories about this when the um when the rumors started coming up that the TVA was going to be involved in Deadpool, that that's how they were going to wrap up this Fox universe stuff. But I think the way they executed it was pretty well. And what I want to talk about as far as the TVA is that, that beginning scene where Deadpool is fighting all them TVA agents with Logan's, uh, Antimantium skeleton with insane yeah. playing hey. in the background. That was a good that intro. I'll fire. give them that. That was, that good was intro. fire. I was not. Like, I was not. First of all, I wasn't expecting him to do the whole song. You know how when the, like an intro starts and it does a little bit of the song, and then like after the chorus, it goes boom. It does that big dramatic make the theater shake, and then we get back to the movie. Mm-hmm. He, he but I like that song. So I'm glad they played all of it. Yeah, he was doing the dance and everything. I was like, silly, (laughs) not serious at all. He was throwing a man's ribs or his fingers like kunai knives from Naruto. I'm like, why? How did y'all even come up with this? Like, did Ryan think of this? Because why are we doing this? He he was like, think of the worst thing you can do with somebody's corpse. Okay, (laughs) but it worked. (laughs) So so adamantium, it worked. (laughs) No. Indeed. I was just like, this is insane. Like, I feel like this definitely set the tone for the rest of the movie because when we got to some of those other parts, like going back to Cassandra ripping the human torches, like I wasn't, I was like, mm, but I wasn't like, mm, because we had already yeah. seen Deadpool cut up in like the first five minutes of the movie. Mm-hmm. But they say when you write the paper, you got to start with an attention grabber. <laughs> and that's what they did. That's what they, they did. did. Why, why, should, why should you stay and watch a two-hour Deadpool movie? Mm-hmm. This is why. Insane. Yeah. They changed the um the title of the video on YouTube. Bye bye bye. In sync from Deadpool and Wolverine. Like that I song noticed, that come out like twenty. I noticed that, but I noticed it on my um music app though. Like the actual song, I would it, it popped up kind of just yeah, like they, trending they or something like that. Yeah, they saying that was from. 
Yeah, now they're saying it's from Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah, I was That's like, That's right. Oh, they're going to get okay. their views on YouTube. Now, now NSYNC got to go on a legacy tour. Congratulations, right. Justin Timberlake. <laughs> we got you something. We got you something to do again. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was something else I wanted to talk about other than the, the TBA and the boy. I don't know. It'll come back to me. But let's get into these cameos. So there was only one of these cameos that I was like, oh, okay, he's coming back. But the rest of them, I was like, that's crazy. And just to go through the list, we got Chris Evans as the Human Torch, Jennifer Garner as Electra, Channing Tatum as Gambit, and Wesley Snipes as Blade, and Daphne King returned as Laura, a.k.a. X-23 from Logan. I was just so thrown off with Shannon Tatum as Gambit. Ooh, so I'm about to make a name for but, myself here. Oh, I'm about to said. make a name for myself. He then said, who is your dialect coach? The Minions? <laughs> but just to give a little just to give a little bit of backstory, because to me, the Shannon Tatum thing wasn't random as it may have seemed to others. So back um, when they were making like the X-Men movies, Shannon Tatum was supposed to get a solo Gambit movie, or he wanted to make it happen. He wanted to have a solo Gambit movie. Um, but with like scheduling conflicts, I think they said like when he was making one of the G.I. Joe movies, he had scheduling conflicts and it didn't happen. And then I think he was trying to get it, you know, up and started again. And that's when Disney bought Fox. So then that was like definitely dead in the water because they weren't doing anything with X-Men at the time. So him showing up at Gam- as Gambit was like, so y'all brought, to me, it was like, so y'all brought in Shannon Tatum. But it wasn't like a, a dead shock and surprise. Like, why the hell is Channing Tatum in a Gambit suit? Because they had another Gambit. Am I wrong? Like, with the long hair from, like, was it X-Men First Class or one of those X-Men movies? There was another Gambit who was throwing around the cards and using purple energy? Or was in that, which, like, a staff? In which, in which movie? It was, like, some of the older X-Men movies. Not, like, the first three, but, like, the one, like I think around that First Class era of X-Men movies. First Class? I don't know. I want to say there was a Gambit. Cause then he have orange energy around cards in a co- in a pole. Hold you on, might be, you might be thinking of somebody differently. Cause I don't remember seeing Gambit in those. Yeah, it was the dude with long hair. It Let was the dude see. with long hair. He had a hat and everything. What movie is that from? Is that orange? Remy LeBeau Gambit X Men movie or- canon wiki. Is that X Men Origins? Remy LeBeau. Yeah. As a former prisoner of Stryker's experiments, blah, 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 blah. Which movie was this? X-Men, X-Men Origins. Origins Wolverine. Yeah. I knew it was one of them older ones. Like, it wasn't like the old, old ones, but it was like <coughs> in that era of X-Men. Because yes. I remember seeing it. Because I thought he was cool. Yeah, he had the cards and everything. I think he put his purple energy, like, around a pole or something. Like, it was kind of cool. Like, he stuck out to me. That's so crazy. And maybe I didn't remember him because it's been so long since I've seen... X Men Origins Wolverine, for you to even bring that up, I was like, I don't remember no Gambit I, being in there. I only remember him because you know I'm not much of a comic book nerd, but I was like, oh, so what's what type of ability is it where you put energy around cards specifically? And I was like, can you put it around other weapons? And I thought it was kind of cool. Well, Ryan just unlocked the memory inside of everybody's <laughs> head because I didn't remember that at all. <laughs> right. And and that's why I was like, so is like Gambit's history like he talks like a minion, or was that just them? That being was fun? the joke. That was the joke. Okay. The joke was for his dialect dialect to be bad. Okay. <laughs> that was the joke. It was funny. It was Man, funny. But, it, but I was like, it was funny though. It, it was, was funny. <laughs> you said, woo. I was he like, said, he I'm said, woo. woo. I'm I'm like, like, that <laughs> whole scene that when they pulled up that whole scene rewinding from that point. Why did y'all use "Bring It Out" by Ti for them driving up to that driving up to that battle? Oh, and, they and, had a lot of fun with this movie. I obviously for y'all to bring bring them out out y'all ass. Bring them out, bring them out. <laughs> but I honestly, honestly, it could have been worse. We could have heard "Nuck If You Buck," a theatrical version of "Nuck If Let's You Buck." We could, it it could have been worse. We could have heard a theatrical version of Nuck If You Buck. They would have <laughs> got a little chuckle out of me, but I would still been like, all right. I would have been, right. been, sitt- been sitting there like Homelander in that movie theater. 
<laughs> I ain't gonna lie. If, if they did it and it was like, do I look like a red hedgehog to you? Well, Knuckles is like an akinda or something like that. If he said like, oh. do I like a red hedgehog to you? I think that would have been funny. I wouldn't have minded. I it would have depend. I I won't even say it would have depend how they did it. I I honestly think the song choice for that moment could have been worse. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly feel like like like. Sitting in a Deadpool movie, hearing "Bring 'Em Out" by Ti was not on my 2024 bingo card, and it's 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 they been brought them out. It's been a lot they, of things that have not been on my 2020 bingo card. They brought them out. I don't think, but compared to how they did the DMX song in the first one, I don't think this one met those expectations. Because <laughs> everybody, because everybody was using that that sound. Like I think I had it for my ringtone at one point. But this yeah. right here, this bring them out? No. No. Yeah. It was a little no. on the point side. Yeah, it was definitely. It was definitely. Mm-hmm. But moving past Shannon Tatum, how'd you guys feel about everybody else who showed up? I'm going to be honest. I watched Blade, and Blade didn't stick out to me that much, so I didn't feel much when Wesley Snipes walked out. I was an Underworld fan. I was an Underworld fan. So like when I saw Blade, I was like, okay, okay. He looks like he could still do the role. He looking good. Okay. Mm-hmm. I ain't, yeah, I ain't seen Blade in a long time. I, I think I used to watch those movies. I can't even remember. It was so long ago, but seeing them in, on the screen was, was cool. I would say these were some cameos I wasn't expecting. Like, I was not expecting them to bring in Wesley Snipes. That's, that's the shock that got me. Like, once I found out, I was like, Wesley Snipes? Yeah. Now... I had found out about Wesley Snipes like a couple days before I went to go see the movie. And I was like, oh, okay. Because I think they, they brought him out at San Diego Comic-Con um, that Thursday night, I want to say, when they were first getting started. And I was like, oh, okay. But then I saw Electra, And I was like, oh, they're going in the, the recent, they going to the back of the archives. And I was like, whoa. And then the Chris Evans Human Torch reveal. They get an A plus for that. They mm-hmm. get an A. They get an A plus for the Chris Evans Human Torch reveal because I thought he was gonna show up as Captain America. That's sort. That's what I was thinking when I first saw. I was like, that's why they get an A. He lit up. In fire. He lit I was up. like, oh. He get, he gets a, they get an A plus. They they get a A plus for that. Because a lot of people don't remember that Chris Evans was the Human Torch in the Fantastic Four movies before he became Captain America. Mm-hmm. I didn't remember that either. I had to leave there and like Google it. I was like, why did they play on that? I was like, oh, so it was like, him. Wait, and then with them playing on the fact that Deadpool is now officially part of the MCU, they're playing with elements inside of the MCU, the TVA, him showing up at the beginning, talking to Happy Hogan, wanting to be Avenger, the Easter egg showing Iron Man's helmet, cap shield, things like that. So when Chris Evans shows up, immediately it's just like, oh, this is just a version of Captain America that the TVA put in the vo- in the void. Psych. Now yeah. they get an A plus for that. Yeah. That cameo, mm-hmm. they get an A plus. Now yeah. the X twenty three cameo was supposed to also stay a, stay a secret, but the actress Daphne King wanted to attend the premiere, so to avoid like all of it coming to a head, they just got ahead of it and released. Um, I think it was like the final like full trailer they released showed her in it, so that way she got to go to the premiere and stuff like that. But I was happy to see her back. And I know Antoine ain't gonna like this part, but I liked it when she put on her shades when when she did her <laughs> nod to, to Logan. Uh, Antoine was sitting by side me. Now why she put on them shades? I was like, you know, <laughs> I, I got it. She, when she was I young, thought it was cute. I, I was like, okay, I it got was, it when she was young, but now I was like, I mean, it I get nod. it. It's it's a, yeah, it's it was a nod to Logan. Mm, yeah, it was. I get it. But when she first put them on, I was like, all right. Antoine looked at me. He said, "Now why she put them shades on?" <laughs> then a couple minutes later, I just don't understand why she got to put had the shades on while she fighting. I like, <laughs> See, I, I, I thought it was cute because I I watched Logan a few times, but I didn't remember every moment. I was like, "Ah, oh, she was the little girl from Logan who did." I'm like, "That was cute. I like that. Mm-hmm. I like you. You just mean Antoine." 
I was just like, she's just too he old said, to be fighting with said, them shades on. He said, it's time to get the business. It's not time you to look just mad cool. You take, them fight. Shade, take them shoes, <laughs> them shades off. I mean, she she's screaming and she got on these little baby shades. And I was like... But that's what I, she was doing in the movie. That that's is what, what she was doing But she was movie. younger then. I get it. It's a nod. So I get it. I'm fine with she it. She was okay, traumatized. She went through a lot. It makes her feel good. And, and, that's and on that, fight mode. When, when it's time to go fight mode, we holler and scream. Okay, we, stop. Because now we're doing a double standard. Like Hugh Jackman wasn't hollering and screaming every time he was fighting the stuff. But Daphne he, King, but X23 get up there, put her shades on and stop fucking and screaming. And that was a problem. It was just the same. It was just the same for me. I was like, you're the two movies, but we need we need to address the double standards that you're imposing as <laughs> like so, like Hugh Jackman. So, so, Hugh, like Jack- three times. so Hugh Jackman can put on that uh that damn face mask at the end of the movie and go fight, but Daddy no. can't put X twenty three can't put her shades on. We, we, we all be, it was <laughs> all jokes, so I was like, okay, I got what you say, Ryan? That's what I got mad at. You you talking about the glasses, you ain't see that ugly mask? He did. That and mask. I, that mask was a mess. That mask. And was I a had mess. thought about that too, but at that point in the movie, I was like, you know what? <laughs> that mask was that. That was fan service. You know how yeah. anime has fan service. Mm-hmm. That mask mm-hmm. was fan service. And, it and was. And it did the Spider Man thing where the white moved with the eyes. I was like, take that off. Like uh, it, you don't need it that. It was fan service. A, a couple, three big Hugh Jackman fan services. One, when he ripped them sleeves off that suit because the original Wolverine suit don't have sleeves on it. Two, him putting on that mask. And three, when they was doing, uh, when they was holding hands in that chamber and his his clothes ripped off, fan service. (laughs) That most even, even when he walked out at the even when he walked out at the end and they was like, Oh yeah, he does look good. I'm like, man, put this old man six pack up. But um <laughs> I got a hot take. I got a hot take on the cameos. I got a hot take on the cameos. Do we feel like Deadpool and Wolverine utilize their cameos better than the cameos in Multiverse of Madness? Remind me of all the cameos from Multiverse of Madness. We had um John, I can't, I can't remember his last name, but Jim from The Office um, as Mr. Fantastic. We had um, the actress who plays Mar- Maria Rambo in mm-hmm. uh, Captain Marvel as Captain. She was actually Captain Marvel. Haley Atwell as um, Captain Carter. Um, Professor X, the OG Professor X, came back. And then they had, I believe it's the same actor from the Inhuman series that they put on Hulu came back as uh, Black Bolt. Personally, I was just so overly excited about Professor X that I think I'm going to have bias towards that. Like, the Human Torch was good in this one, but they also have Mr. Fantastic in that one. And, like, I was so excited with Professor X. I'm not a comic book nerd. So when I'm paying attention to the movies that I enjoy historically from Marvel and Fox, I was like... I rock with Professor X. Wesley Snipes and all of them, I ain't have much of a tie to them. And X-23, I was like, she a good at, I, I would love to see what they do with the character, but I was like, eh, I don't know what y'all finna do. Well, not so much how you feel about them. Do you feel like they use the cameos, of you looking at the way they use the cameos in Deadpool and Wolverine and how they use the cameos in Multiverse of Madness, which one would you say? Which movie do you feel like utilize their cameos better? Multiverse of Madness, because the only cameo that had, oops, and Deadpool was probably um Chris Evans as Human Torch. I did the I don't feel like the other ones had much impact. Mm-hmm. Like it was fun Shannon Taylor was funny, don't get me wrong with that voice stuff, but I feel like Professor X and um all of them added some a lot of oomph to the story and like what could come next in Multiverse of Madness. For me. I would disagree. <laughs> I would disagree. You so caught up in Professor X and them showing up that you forgot they died five minutes later. <laughs> I thought it was cool. It added I, something for me. I I just don't have ties to the characters. Add. What did it? For what, me, what, what, Professor, did, what did it add? What 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 did, what did Professor for, X showing up and Wanda getting his ass the next five minutes do for the rest of that story? Because I'm like he's one of the ultimate mutants and he just got wiped out like that. That was crazy. It just made her look super strong. And I had ties to those characters. I don't have much emotions for the characters that they used in Deadpool, being honest. Like, I forgot that Chris Evans was Human Torch. 
so like I didn't have much ties to any of these folks. So for me, Multiverse of Madness did it better. I feel like Deadpool. I have go ahead, Antoine. I, I, I understand what you're saying. I I did like seeing Wesley Snipes in um uh, the human torch, uh Chris Evans' is human torch. So I gotta um I gotta go towards Deadpool. But I, I feel you though. I, I I hear what you're saying. I feel like Deadpool and Wolverine did it better because them folks actually got the fight. Them folks in Multiverse of Madness did not get to fight. They did not. They did not get. They no. Didn't get no. Mr. Fantastic <laughs> turned to no. um sh- silly string like when he was in the fight. Then Mr. Fantastic get turned to silly string or something. Yes. I thought that was funny. As far as utilizing the cameos to their full capacity and them not being cameos just to be cameos, I have to give it to Deadpool and Wolverine. Just show up and die. That is basically <laughs> what happened in Multiverse of Madness. They all sat there, sat there in them chairs, and Wanda took care of them. It was like that. They tease. I could go on a rant on how they tease some of them cameos just for Wanda to show up and body y'all. I was kind of disappointed in that. I was like, well, damn. Deadpool and Wolverine, we got to see the people. We got to see them interact with the main characters. We got to see use them their fight. Abilities. Use their abilities. Like, we got a full, like, we got if we got a full, like, story from their perspective of how the TVA basically effed them over. I feel you, though. I feel you. <laughs> I, I feel you. <laughs> I, I feel, feel you. you. I, yeah. I just... I feel like I feel like Deadpool and Wolverine use they ca- I use they cameos way better than Multiverse of Madness. But um, I Antoine guess over here yawning. You don't want to be here or something? Ooh. I yawn all the time. <laughs> now he's sleepy, but we kind of talked about um everything that I had for the movie and I can't remember that thing from the past where I was like I want to ask you guys about theories for the future or well we kind of already know because we had the um San Diego Comic Con as far as what will come next coming out of Deadpool and Wolverine so here's so here's something that I did see this wasn't the the thing from the past that I want to ask you guys about but we spoke about this a little bit on the San Diego Comic Con episode but the Leading rumor is that Earth 1005 is the Earth that Deadpool and Wolverine are currently in right now. This is the same timeline that Logan happened in. And a lot of people, um, based on everything that's coming up, going towards Secret Wars, a lot of people have been theorizing that this might be the Earth that... um, I keep forgetting the word. It's not converge, but will collide with Earth 616 and eventually create Battle World. But one of the questions that I got from uh, my coworker was if Earth 1005 is the Earth that Logan took place on, why was X 23 in the void? Hmm. Because they move people to the void when they're obstructing, like, their decisions or, like, they could alter the timelines. Or it, it was stated from, like, a lecture in them that when they came to Pruner of Timelines, they took out people who wouldn't go freely or wouldn't go quietly. Resistance, basically. So my theory on that was, so Logan, when did Logan come out? Like... Somewhere between 2015 and 2017. 2017. Logan came out in 2017. So if we talk in 2024, and if Logan was the anchor being, and that earth was already deteriorating, my theory is that they probably took her out early because the TVA and Loki season one, they was just pruning timelines like, y'all gotta go. Like they was just pressing that, like that Jimmy New, them Jimmy Neutron robots, delete, 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 delete. Mm-hmm. But then it, they flipped it, you know, they stopped doing that, which has led us to the TVA now. My thought is, is that they were about to hit the big button on that earth. They took out X-23 because they knew she was going to be a problem and then decided that they wasn't going to do it and then didn't put her back. So my whole thing is, 
isn't also from the Logan universe. A lot of the X Men like died or whatever, and now it's just a whole new generation. Is that like their purpose to create well, new X Men? Well, we don't know if they have mutants. That's the other thing. I don't know. Well, let's let's go back to the San Diego Comic Con episode. I also saw a theory. the The other leading rumor is that Monica Rambeau, at the end of the Marvels, when she ended up with Beast in that X Men facility, that's also the same Irv that uh, they're pulling Wolverine on. Now, if that's not correct, let me know in the comments. Let's get this sorted out because this multiverse shit is confusing. But if that's the case, I wonder how they're going to explain that. Unless Deadpool and Wolverine happened way before the Marvels or if they were happening at the same time and with them bringing in the wolf, this Wolverine into this timeline, maybe they, they changed something. They reset something. Right. So. And, 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 and it, also, it could also be that we might be overthinking this shit. This is at at the end of the day. This is a Deadpool movie. We might be overthinking a lot of shit. Yeah, because it's like to this movie. Maybe they're just on the earth, and we got new characters, and it's like that. Maybe, <laughs> like maybe we pro- we could be thinking too deeply into it. Yeah. So that one scene where they show Deadpool being held by Thor, I've seen people hollering, "Oh my god, that's gonna happen in Secret Wars." Possibly. They did hint at that a lot, so yeah. They said, I wonder. they said they said that this is gonna happen in the distant future, so it could happen in Secret Wars or on the back end. This is a Deadpool movie. It could not. I could see him in the comics. Does Deadpool become an an Avenger? Does he ever accomplish his dream? I don't. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm be honest with you. Yeah. The the, the Avengers the Avengers have had many different rosters, but I, out of the many rosters that I've seen, I haven't seen Deadpool in one of them. And I honestly, hope he his dream. honestly, truly, I don't even know if that's like a comic book accurate dream for him, or if Ryan Reynolds was just like, "Hey, why not to make mm-hmm. a funny scene with him and Happy Hogan and him talking about smash debating?" <laughs> honestly, honestly, like. Even though like Tony Stark is only coming in as like Doom or whatever, I would have loved to see how a Ryan Reynolds Deadpool and a Tony Stark Iron Man interact. Like I could just see Tony Stark getting like overly pissed off or getting along with him. Like there's I, no in between. He wouldn't want to do it. No. <laughs> no. I I don't think I don't think the Avengers thing was supposed to be serious. I honestly think that that was a play on the fact that Deadpool is officially in the MCU. So mm-hmm. let's think of all the MCU places that it would be fun to see Deadpool in. Oh yeah, Avengers Tower. Oh yeah, the TBA. Yeah. Oh yeah, let him get held by Thor. Oh yeah, let's show him all these clips from Endgame and Infinity War and shit. Let's really emphasize that yeah, your boy Deadpool is in the MCU. The only Fox ca- Fox character who gets his own solo movie in the MCU and everybody else are cameos that may or may not be seen again. He made it. He made the cut. He made it. <laughs> Mama, I made it. XOXO right. XO Deadpool. <laughs> <laughs> That's something he would say. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I really, I really don't have any theories coming out of this movie. I, I, I just... I know there can be theories. I know we can sit here and talk all day and like really dissect this movie, like with the TVA and the multiverse and all of that stuff. But I honestly feel like with it being a Deadpool movie, we may be overthinking a lot. Yeah, I say let's just enjoy the ride. I honestly, I honestly don't see Deadpool showing up until we get to those Avengers movies, and it may just be a joke. Like it, it honestly literally might be a family got cut scene, him doing something stupid, and then we getting back to the real story. Mm-hmm. I think I like seeing him in his own movies. That's yeah, I don't that's, I don't know if he would get I don't know if they would make more Deadpool movies. Like I, I, I get yeah, it. Like I, I get it. Like this is his first movie in the MCU, but but this is his third movie in the franchise overall. So I would hate for him to, I would hate for them to milk it like Thor Mm -hmm. and make a Thor 4 for whatever reason. Yeah, the only thing I can see Deadpool doing is being like an extra in another movie. You're right. I couldn't, 
unless they do another like something like this where it's like we just need a random reason to describe our decisions as a company i don't see another yeah. damn cool movie yeah if anything use somebody else to get this kind of comedic spoof feel if y'all can mm-hmm. oh i know what i wanted to talk about that thing from the past that i can remember how'd you guys feel about that that fight with um so it's two fights i want to point out the Deadpool versus Wolverine one when they first meet, and then when they was fighting all them uh them Deadpools in the street. I enjoy both of those. It's just the I, fact that they threw them folks through a bus, killed everybody just to get back, and it's like, ha, ah, oh, regeneration. I guess they can regenerate. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of thinking about that regenerate. though during the whole fight. I was like. Can they not regenerate? But I feel like how they tried to get you is with nice pool couldn't uh-huh, regenerate. Yeah. So then they had you thinking, okay, well maybe all of these dead pools can't regenerate. But I was like, that would just and, be so weird if Ryan Reynolds is the only one that can regenerate. But I was like, I guess they're not getting up, so I guess not. But and, them folks got and up. one thing, I, they got up like the White Walkers in that episode <laughs> of Game of Thrones. Yeah. And I was shocked that Ryan Reynolds ain't acknowledged Lady Deadpool because I'm like, I thought he would say something like, huh, I'm kind of fine. Or like, what does my face look like as a woman? I thought he would acknowledge that, but he didn't. I was like, okay, maybe mm-hmm. the joke was too easy. She was too busy maybe. trying to sexy walk the whole time. Right. She, she was, was like, was. My, my favorite, my favorite line, Uzi time, baby. Uzi time, baby. <laughs> Uzi time, baby. <laughs> She killed that. And I was like, because I was like, if her mask comes off, is it just a Ryan Reynolds with like a wig on? Like, it was, I was his really... wife. It was his ah. wife in the suit. Blake okay. Lively. So. Mm. Mm. Everybody thought, because somebody was saying like, it came out like a couple months ago that Taylor Swift, there was rumored that Taylor Swift was supposed to be doing something with this movie. And I was like, it better be a motherfucking song. I remember seeing dead that. serious. And, they, <laughs> and when they came out with the trailer with Lady Deadpool, they was like, it might be Taylor Swift. And so I was like, I hope it's not Taylor Swift. So. I can't no, say what no. I don't want to say. Yeah, I hope that it's wasn't, not. That wasn't Taylor That couldn't have been Taylor Swift. <laughs> I thought it, but you said it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it. I hey, didn't but didn't but I'm going to be honest. With the, way, the way she was walking, I was like, this doesn't feel very Taylor Swift to me. But they wasn't telling. But they wasn't telling us who was in the suit. But I was like, this mm. don't feel like Taylor Swift to me. And we gonna leave it like that. It just didn't I'm feel an, like I'm Taylor Swift. I'm an ally of women. I can't say. What I want. <laughs> <laughs> but that first fight scene, I would I would say this: the comedy and the fight choreography in this movie, top A one, A plus. The fight, the fight scenes were great. The fight scene when they in the void was great. My favorite is the fight in the Honda Odyssey. Yeah, yeah. Cause, cause like, what can you do with so two people who can regenerate? Like y'all are just cutting each other y'all up. Y'all just going at it. You're just, going, like, you're you're just, just angry. <laughs> like that had to be a stress reliever though for them. That gave <laughs> for real. That gave like that bathroom fight in JJK. Like. What are y'all doing? Like this is such a tight space. Like why are y'all, y'all doing get this out in this the car? <laughs> y'all got they, knocked they out got, the car. He and got, got knocked out the car and got back in the car. <laughs> car. If y'all anything, serious. this is mark. If anything, this is marketing for Honda. Yeah. If, two, <laughs> if two, if two men can get back there and have at it, and that car can still drive still out drive. the next day. <laughs> Hondas never it break drove, down. Huh? It drove to two battles. Brought one to you in fire. <laughs> that woman Wolverine brought you by Honda Odyssey. And, and how many times is Deadpool gonna get stabbed in the groin, bro? Like I'm like over and over again. I well, why are you still fighting? Don't you feel that? At least some well, probably, enjoys probably. it. I think well, at this it, point. Yeah, I feel That's like sweet. I feel That's like af- it. It could be that, and I also feel like you. You know, after you know, you know, being mangled multiple times throughout your life, you might get mutilated. Used to it. Mutilated. Mangled. Because no. I was just trying to think of the right word. Like even even before Deadpool and Wolverine, he was getting told, what was that movie when they like blew him the smithereens and he had to sit there on the couch and with his the baby arms hands and the baby back. Back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they went back to that. Remember when he cut somebody's arm off in the um in the baby, the baby. <laughs> yeah, <their arms> mm-hmm. <laughs> 
But I would say if there's anything you take away from this movie, the comedy and the fight choreography um, was, good. Was, was good. Mm-hmm. So. It was good. But that's all I have for Deadpool and Wolverine. What about you guys? Shout out to Ryan and Hugh. Yeah. All right. Good dynamic. It was a good dynamic. Love it was. It. But um, with that all being said, let's go ahead and shut this down. So once again, Ryan and Antoine, I appreciate you guys for joining me on another episode of the Blur Mob Podcast. I appreciate everybody who tuned in into this episode, whether this is your first time or 50th time watching or listening. It is always appreciated. Like I said, let us know in the comments how you felt about the movie, how you felt about the discussion. Um, make sure you follow us on social media to keep up with all things black and nerdy, anime, comics, music, um, movies and TV. Tap in. We're on Instagram at the Blur Mob Pod. You can find us on Twitter at the Blur Mob, and you can find us on Facebook and TikTok at the Blur Mob Podcast. And make sure you guys check out those links in the description to donate to the mob. It goes to equipment, subscriptions, and everything that we use to bring you guys these lovely episodes. So, with all that being said, this is the mob checking out. Peace. Damn, it's gonna be messy. like this is messy. <laughs> like when it when when Jean showed up at the door, and it was two jeans. I said, "See y'all messy." Yeah, I was like, "Cause who he married to? <laughs> Whose baby is this? Whose man is this?" <laughs> <laughs>